guys, Jim here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm in now in lesson number nine of my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial. As I said before, I'm having a lot of fun. I've got a, a, at least one more video to do. We'll see if I get past 10. Uh, but this one is about monochrome photography. And so you might be saying, oh, Jim, you mean black and white. Uh, and I do. Black and white is a type of monochrome. And we'll get into that and the differences here in a few minutes. But I'm going to cover a number of things. I'm going to walk through five different images and show you how I would edit them. And to me, they're all there's so many different styles of black and white that you can do. And while I, I can't cover them all, um, because you know I don't even know how many there are really. There's countless uh, ways to do things. There's there's kind of five that that I tend to sort of circle around when I'm when I'm doing black and white. And the truth is, um, a lot of times with HDR, you're thinking about HDR and you're thinking about color because you know, huge uh, colors, big colors, are kind of a byproduct of the HDR process. And I love them. I mean, if you look at my work, I think it's pretty clear that I like big color. Um, but I've really grown to love black and white over the years. And um, it's kind of like I talked about in my textures video. I used to not really care for it. And when I was doing HDR in the beginning, I, I was all about the color. And again, while I'm mostly still about big colors, I've, I've really I've developed an appreciation for black and white. Um, and monochrome photos, I just think they're beautiful and timeless in many ways. And so um, I'm gonna walk through five different examples. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here you go. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is kind of the fine art, sort of the classic black and white kind of look. Um, and in this case, um, I'm gonna just do a few basic edits, but what I always do first on every black and white is come over here to saturation and just take it all the way to zero. And hey, guess what? You have a black and white. Um, but I do that on purpose, and that's because I want to start with a black and white base photo before I start making edits to it. So I come over here now that I've got things sort of where I want them to be, and I'll start making adjustments. And, and I'm kind of just riffing here. I don't really know, you know, there's not a specific thing I want to do to this photo. I just kind of want to bring up some of the details and the structure. Maybe, let's see if polarizer works uh, okay. You know, it's not really doing much for me here. Let's go further. Yeah, not really doing much, so maybe I won't use it. Like I said, I don't have a particular plan with this photo, but to me, this is one of the sort of genres or sort of factions of black and white, and that is kind of the fine art landscape, kind of the classic black and white kind of look. Um, I see these a lot with long exposures. We have the long wispy clouds where you do like a two or three minute exposure. I see it a lot with landscapes, but to me, that's the first one. This is the basic classic black and white. And you know, basically, it comes down to increasing the contrast, uh, you know, managing the tones, maybe adding some structure, and of course, just taking the color completely out. If I add color back, you would look at it in color and say that looks terrible. And the only thing I did to the color was take the saturation to zero, and that's because with this much contrast, it really bumps the colors up against one another, and so. That's why I reduce color to zero or saturation to zero at the beginning as a first step because if I was editing the photo and then converting to black and white, I would never get to this edit. So it, it doesn't look that great in, with these colors. It's too green, it's too blue. Um, but as a black and white, I think it looks nice, right? The other thing I might would do here is use top and bottom tuning and maybe change the contrast uh, in some of the uh, upper and lower portions of the photo. I might even uh, bump the exposure a little bit on the bottom. And you know, once again, there to there, a big difference. Classic, sort of high contrast black and white, but I think beautiful. So that's photo number one, and that's kind of the fine art version. Let me go get photo number two, and I'll be right back. Okay, photo number two, we're gonna talk about selective color. Uh, you see this in a lot of black and whites where there may be, say, a lady with an umbrella, and the umbrella's red, and it's still red in the photo. Everything else is black and white. It's a popular, some people say it's kind of gimmicky. I like it, actually. It depends on the photo, but it can look really nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you something. If I come over here and reduce the saturation to zero and want to do selective color, I can't do selective color. So the way you do it is you actually come over here to HSL and you take the saturation of all these colors down to zero, right? So I'm just dragging everything to the left and I'm reducing all the color channels basically excuse me, individually. Um, let's say I just want the red, I bring back the red, and I put that maybe to 100, and there's a uh, selective color, uh, black and white, or monochrome photo. It's not really monochrome, because I guess you have other colors in there, but anyway, it's black and white with some selective color. 
And then you can come in here and do whatever you want to do with uh, the rest of the settings, it, you know, contrast, HDR enhance, whatever you may want to use. But that's a selective color. It's a prime example of sort of a classic black and white technique with one little sort of uh, thing added, which is just a spot of color. And it's quick and easy to do. You just use HSL and then make other adjustments after uh, you've done that. So that's photo two, selective color. Let me get the third photo and I'll be right back. Okay, photo number three. In this case, we're gonna actually talk about monochromes. I said at the beginning, monochrome, and I said black and white. And the truth is, people use these terms interchangeably all the time. I, I do as well, in fact. I say monochrome, um, or actually I say black and white often when it's actually a monochrome. And so what the difference is, is black and white is black and white, right? Or somewhere on the grayscale. Monochrome is actually the broader category. Mono meaning one, chrome meaning color. So you can have a sepia color. You could have sort of a cyanotype, um, kind of a silvery look, you know, things like that. You can do uh, literally dozens of different sort of combinations. Um, and you do that with split toning. So let me show you what I'm talking about. The point is that black and white is a monochrome, but monochrome is not necessarily a black and white, right? So with this photo, I would just come in here and I'm just kind of dragging some sliders. Um, again, I don't have a specific plan with this photo. I'm just kind of making some adjustments. And let me see if I can just get this to kind of, okay, so there we go. Um, and you know what else I should do is probably make this um, black and white, right? Now that's black and white. But here's where I get into the adjustments and that's with color toning, also known as split toning. So you can come over here and you can take the, the highlights to kind of that uh, orangey yellow. And you know, if you wanna do the same with the shadows, kind of drag that and there you go, you get sort of a sepia look. Now that's a monochrome, it's one color effectively, which is on kind of the orangey brown red scale. And so that's the sepia look as a monochrome. Another one that's popular and, and frankly, I love this look. And that's uh, this one, which is kind of this silvery kind of blue um, almost kind of cyanotype, but not quite, but something kind of like that. I might would mess with the uh, the hues a little bit to get it, you know, exactly how I wanted it. I might change that a little bit, maybe bump up some of these. Uh, the point is, you've seen these, they're kind of the silver, I call them silver, but uh, it probably has a more accurate technical name. But to me, it's kind of the silvery look. Again, another example of monochrome, it's not black and white, it's um, done using color toning or split toning, but it's a very powerful tool. You know, you've probably seen infrared shots at night, um, like through, you know, goggles, like military kind of shots, and they're all green. That's a monochrome, right? It's all pretty much green on that spectrum. So you could create that look here, I guess, if you really like green. Um, I don't really care for it a whole lot, but you could do something like that. Um, not my look and probably not what you're going for. I like this silver blue kind of best for uh, landscapes and what else? I think it looks really neat on like nighttime shots of cities. That silvery blue, I think, just sparkles. Um, and so that's monochromes, and that's what I wanted to differentiate between monochromes and black and whites. They are different. Black and white is a type of monochrome. Um, so that's uh, number three, which is monochromes as a broader category and how to achieve that look using the color toning or split toning feature in Aurora. Now I'm gonna move on to photo number four. I'll be right back. Let me get that photo. Okay, I'm back, thanks. This is photo number four. And in this one, we're talking about kind of that grainy, sort of traditional film look. And while there's not a grain setting in Aurora, you can achieve that using some of the tools. So let me get in here and take saturation to zero. Uh, there's a black and white, also a monochrome, right? Um, I'm gonna come in here and make some adjustments. And again, I'm kind of riffing, just sort of uh, playing with it. But here's where I sort of add some grain, and that is with the structure slider. If you look at this sky, um, structure is kind of like noise in a sky, right? It, it shows up really well with the details and uh, that sort of thing in the areas where there are details. So these, you know, these cobblestones, but in the sky, it shows up in the form of noise. To me, that's kind of a film look, um, almost a film noir kind of look where you have this kind of high contrast sort of look to the scene. It can be interesting, it can be fun. I like these kind of shots. Um, again, I do a lot of big color, that's kind of my primary thing, but whenever I'm messing with black and whites, especially city shots, I love to do black and whites. I just think they look cool. Um, and then, as I mentioned in the last 
photo. If you come into color toning, this is where you can drag sort of that silver look and create, um, I need to get a little bit more on the blue spectrum there, and create a little bit of a uh, sort of a bluer sort of silver hue, something like that. I think that looks cool as well. So there's the before when it was just a pure monochrome slash black and white. And here it is, is with kind of that silver look. Not what I'm talking about in this photo. This one, I'm really talking about the sort of grainy feel, which I brought up and added to the photo with the structure slider. But I think it works good, and that's photo number four. Let me go get one more, and I'll be right back for photo number five. Hang on a second. Okay, photo number five. And this is just pure straight up fun for me. It's just taking a kind of a gritty scene, kind of an urbex kind of scene, even though this isn't like an urban environment. This is an old abandoned prison. Taking like a... Can't talk right now. Uh, sorry about that. Um, taking like a gritty urban scene and just grunging it up. And so, um, you know, oops, hang on. First thing first, take the saturation to zero. And then I'm just coming in here with contrast. I'm going to bump HDR enhance. I'm going to get into the structure menu and just drag those sliders to the right. And I'm going to also get into details boost. And I'm going to go with the medium details here. And I'm just kind of grunging it up. Like I said, now, that's a grungy black and white, kind of an urbex looking, uh, just a straight up pleasure to edit, to be honest, because, you know, with, with black and white, you know, you get away from all the colors. And when you think of HDR, as I said before, you really think of big color, but HDR is really about light. It's not about color. And so, you know, using the light and doing things in black and white or monochrome is a great way to really accentuate the light. You've got some nice shadow here and you get so much detail. I think it's just a fun shot, to be honest. And you can see sort of the before and after, right? That's a single exposure from the bracket set. And the after is just a moody, grungy, highly detailed, just monochrome shot. And I think it's a lot of fun. So that's really five different ideas. It's not an exhaustive list. And I'm not an expert in, in monochromes or black and white. I experiment with them. I have fun with them. And I love to do them. Um, so I just wanted to share some ideas. The point is... You've got a lot of capability under the hood in Aurora 2018. So much you can do, whether it's a single exposure or an HDR. Come in here and experiment with black and whites, monochromes, whatever you want to call them. Try the color toning, mix the tones up, do a sepia, do a kind of a silvery, whatever it is you like to do. Just experiment and have fun because there's so much you can do. And these are colorless photos essentially, right? And so, you know, not even talking about all the crazy fun stuff you can do with all the colors in an HDR photo in Aurora, but just focusing, taking those out, it really makes you focus on the composition, the lines, the details, and things like that. It's a great avenue to explore. It's a lot of fun, so go have fun with it. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you, appreciate you watching. If this video is helpful, give it a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and don't forget to share with your friends. And by the way, please hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. More videos coming as soon as I can get to them, which is real soon. And uh, we'll be talking, my friends. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. See you next time. Adios.